Then Ezra told them, Go your way. Eat the fat, drink the sweet drink, and send portions to him for whom nothing is prepared. For this day is holy to our Lord. And be not grieved and depressed, for the joy of the Lord is your strength and stronghold. Mm -hmm. So joy comes from a place. It is also given. There's something else in there I was going to say, and I lost the train of thought. Yep, so basically, joy. And it's like, even with that, it's like, you know, we can, you know, root and cheer, you know, for our favorite team and when they win, when they win, you know, we're all over the place. We're emotional, we're happy, you know, we have that sense of exhilaration, that joy. But when it comes to the word of God, we don't we don't we don't do it like that. You know, our praise is, is weak. You know, our worship is weak. You know, and it, I mean we put that much energy into celebrating something in the natural, why can't we put that same amount of energy or more in something that's spiritual? Amen. You know, because that's what's life saving. Right. So the question right. So the question is, what is the fullest, deepest, most lasting kind of joy that a human being can have from God and how can we get it? And how can we find it? Yeah, I know it's a tweet that to me. The full question. Yeah, I know. What is the fullest, deepest most lasting kind of joy that a human being can have from God, and how can I get it? That's the first one. I love him and love all and everybody. Okay. Okay. Putting him totally first. Mm -hmm. Above wife, mother, sister, brother, mama, dad. Okay. Any other? By believing and receiving, because it's one thing to know somebody can say that they got you, but to actually be able to rest, knowing that it's for real, for real, I got you, mm -hmm. and you can go to sleep. That's a different kind of peace, a different kind of sleep, a different kind of every level in God mm -hmm. to know that that it's not going to come from anything. He'll use the vessels, but then mm -hmm. ultimately, when I whether I sleep, whether I'm doing something or not, whether I'm presently my bills paid or not, he got me. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So to believe that and not only just say I believe it, but actually receive it and take it on to myself is like the deepest. Mm -hmm. yeah. and, and that's where we have to get to that point right there. Like, mm -hmm. we, we, it's a must. It's a must needs moment. You got to get there. Mm -hmm. Okay, so the second part of that question was, how can I find it? Glad you asked. Let's turn to John 15 and 11. Reader. I have told you these things, that my joy and delight may be in you and that your joy and gladness may be a full measure and complete and overflowing. Mm -hmm. And the, in the King James Version, it says, These things have I spoken unto you, that my joy might remain in you, and that your joy might be full. And basically, to me, what it's saying is that everything that Jesus has, we get it from him, it's in us. Mm -hmm. So that completes us. That's the joy. The joy he has, we already have it. We just have to tap into it. So, and yep. It says, the reason this text is important with basically that scripture is that Jesus refers to his own joy as being in us. Not just giving us a joy, but his joy and whatever he is joyful in is in us. And I'm going to read that again. Jesus refers to his own joy as being in us, not just giving us a joy, but his joy and whatever he is joyful in right. is in us. And I really like that. When I kept reading it over and over and over, I'm like, wow. So 
He wants us to be happy. He wants us to be happy with what we have. He wants us to be happy or joyful rather in what he's already provided for us and who he is. Yeah. You know, and it's like, you know, what greater joy can you get, you know, what, what, what more do you need? You know, so we're not just rejoicing over what we know about Jesus. We are rejoicing with the very joy of Jesus over what he knows about everything, especially what he knows about his father, our father. Yes, ma'am. I think that's where, to me, we get from religion and relationship. Because when you go to most churches, we teach you what to do, what not to do. And, or we read a whole lot of scriptures too. When in actuality, I'm there to unlock what is in me. I'm there to birth out something and grow into a, a certain type of individual around the sister and the brotherhood. Versus I come there to pay my tithes and I come there to, you know, hey, how you doing? All oh, that is, it, that's, you know, that's necessity too. Mm -hmm. But you're coming to get what you need on the journey. Right. Mm -hmm. And when you don't come like that, and we don't know that because we get bombarded with other stuff, politics of the church and this and that and that. So you really never know that you're supposed to be in class. Mm -hmm. You're supposed to be in school, mm -hmm. learning and growing and yeah, developing into something, into Christ. Mm -hmm. So that stuff is still locked up. You go to church 50 years mm -hmm. and, and you still, you know, kindergarten. don't know that you can lay hands on the heel and don't know you can speak in tongues and interpret tongues. You never get to that part because you're still trying to say, well, is my hair too short? <laughs> you know, so you don't get to why you're actually there. Because mm -hmm. what we, you know, fail to realize and what I um, heard the preacher say one time is that spiritual maturity belongs to us. Mm -hmm. We have access to it. Yes. You know, we got to, you know, like you said, activate it. It's an action thing. In the, in the exchange, it's action. You got, you have to want it. You have to move towards change. And then, because uh, one thing I was thinking about, you know, is as far as, you know, the exchange and the actions, what it requires is that it requires also, and, and this has been in my you know, head for like a month, is, you know, the renewing of my mind. I got to have a, a new mind. I have to move towards wanting you know that type of wisdom and that type of uh, maturity if i you know if i want it i have to do something because it's like it's already like this now i have, I, just, I have to like this to receive it but if i don't open my hands to receive it i won't ever get it so i have to do something because god has already provided it any other questions comments <laughs>
and I just say, you know, God, give me another chance. Let me get it right. Please let me get it right. You know, leave for Aaron and Ash and let them show this is, you know, I might not have known some stuff, but let, let them know your mom know this. And so, you know, it, it, it's good to, to know God for yourself, you know, and have a relationship. And that's, when you say a relationship, that is, you got to have a relationship. Because when you go with somebody, talking to somebody, you know everything, you know what they like, you know their birthday, you know, you know what, you know what time they go to work, you know all that kind of stuff. But you can't, you ain't looking at God like that and trying to get a relationship with Him, and He's the one <laughs> that all the things to get. We forget about that. How how important it is to have that relationship with Him. Because it makes me also think, you know, all that we're learning, and then in our learning, and all that we've experienced, and you know. I I've heard of the covenant, never heard of the blood covenant. I mean, just a lot of things that you know, I just didn't know was in the Bible, you know. And then it just you know, you know, everybody has their you know, moment that you know, the light bulb comes on and everything. And I'm like, you know what? We are on a divine collision course with our destiny. I mean, we're gonna run right smack dab into it, regardless of if we make a right. It's gonna make the adjustment to make sure we hit, you know. And I'm just like, you know, wow, because looking back, you know, over my life and you know, things that I went through and experienced, and it was like, it's destiny. <laughs> and I'm going to run right into it, regardless of whatever decision I make. You know, if I go left or go right, I'm destined to still hit it. You know, it's going to be a divine collision course. And I'm like, you know what? Praise Jesus. <laughs> because um, it's, it's specifically, we're on this journey for a reason. Right, and when, right. And when it, I realized it, it's like, okay, here we go. Okay, you say a renewing of your mind? Come on. It's about to happen, and it's happening now. You know, and I appreciate, you know, the Holy Spirit for that. Because a lot of things, you know, just, I chose to be blind to it. You know, because I didn't want to accept, you know, the fact of what is, which is the word, you know, and I was, you know, out there, you know, not when I say out there, I made some decisions about some things that um, would have affected right now, it would have affected, you know, my daughter, it would have affected people that's in my circle, you know, and you just, I just have to thank, thank God, I'm like, ooh, thank you, Jesus, but, um, when you um, just going back and understanding you know, more and more and more about you know how important you know the covenant is and uh, how much we are actually loved. Oh my God! You know that's like my right God. There. You know yeah. And, yeah. and and I feel bad sometimes because I'm like, okay, God, um, I know I need to do better here. I need you know spend more time in your word, spend more time praying, spend more time you know visiting the sick and all this stuff we're supposed to do. But life, life. You know, things that happen prevent, you know, us from doing things or prevent me from doing that, you know, and it's not an excuse, though. I can't, it's not an excuse. Right. So, it becomes, like I said, the movement of change. I have to do it. I have to do it. I have to change. Right. Amen. Right, right, right. Minister. I was just thinking about, uh, you said, the miracle by Joy. And it was uh, John. And God took me back up. And he started from level. I'm, he said, read about level back up. Now, mm -hmm. He said, I have told you, starting to level, he said, I told you these things so that my joy and delight may be in you, and that your joy may be full and complete and overflowing. Mm -hmm. But he says, now he said, I have loved you just as the Father has loved me. He said, remain in my love. Right. But he go back and he said, uh, and it says in us, in seven, he said, whatsoever you ask, it'll be done for you. But what got what me was remaining in his love. And we know, and he said, you are already clean in three because of the word which I have given you. Mm. And when he said, I am the true vine, right. my father the wine, the vine dresser. Right. And what I do from that word, despite how I feel about myself, God see me a different way. Yes. 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 God see me yes. in a different light. Yes. And he said, I, I love you just like your father loved me. Yes. 
then if you can pick, if you can wrap your mind around how much he loved me, then how I love you, despite what you go through, mm -hmm. God feels totally different. Yeah, right. Mm -hmm. yeah. Despite how, and then just, man, let me the word of a person that, a crackhead. Mm -hmm. This person out here, I'm crack. Mm -hmm. Everybody in the family is disowned this person. But that person always go back to the mom. Because of the love of mom. Yes. Of that child. Right. Yes. And feel all right. Even though they feel on crack. But they can always go back to that love of the mom. And even though, you know, we go through stuff in life. You know, we, we get off sometimes. But I got to reflect back God's love. God still love me. Regardless of what I've done, He still love me. And it'll bring, it'll bring, it brings somebody when you know somebody very, very well. You know somebody that really cares about you. It brings some uh, different kind of joy, uh, joy from you because you know this person really cares about you. And, uh, and that's the only way you can remain in Christ, you know, because you're reflecting on His love and what He has done for us. To remain in him. Because the love, his love won't keep you in him. Yes. <laughs> Bye. And that makes me uh, go back to what um, the Patterson's talk uh, last time about the remission of sin. And and, and then what you just, just said is like the bottom line is love. Yes. He loves us. And regardless of what we've done, then, now, before we've even committed it, he loves us. Right. And I remember I had gone through this period a couple of years ago, and I'm like, you know, praying. I'm like, do you still love me? Because right. I didn't know. Because yeah. I, I mean, because something that just happened, I'm like, do you, do you still right. love me? Mm -hmm. And y'all know I be having dreams, <laughs> dreams. <laughs> and that night, in that dream, there was this necklace. It was. It was huge, mm -hmm. and I just saw it. It was just draped on me. Beautiful, never seen anything like that in my life. And a crown that was placed on my head. And he was like, I see you like this. Mm -hmm. It messed me up. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it messed me up big time. Because I'm like, you know, just as dirty, you know, as I am, and some of the things I, you know, think and do, you see me like this? Oh, wow. And it's, it's, you know, it's mind-boggling sometimes, you know, to know. It's like, because there are days of just being honest, I feel worthless. Like I said you know, the last time, I'm not worthy to take, you know, to, to take um, the Lord's Supper. I don't feel like it. I just don't feel that way sometimes. But now that I know what I know, I am worthy. Right. I am because His love that's good that He's given us. And when you understand... And we don't even understand to you know the, the fullness of that type of love, you know. But just to know that He loves us, and we can have joy in His love, we're gonna be all right. I'm gonna be all right, you know. Then I want y'all heard something. You were just scratching your head. <laughs> you know, if we can get past. Uh, what we did in a sinful world before our Savior came along. Because I think the hardest step in any sinner uh, that has acknowledged Jesus' life is for me is what I did to deserve a Savior like this. And sometimes the first step is the hardest step because you feel so undeserving. And I can't speak for nobody in this room but me. And, and I'm finding out... Uh, it's so amazing when you think you're not worthy, which I never was, but he cared and loved enough to say you are. Mm -hmm. And I can't get in and if if we get to that 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 little click right there, click glitch. If you can get past that glitch. It's smooth sailing because it's like with that glitch, it sticks you there because you know you're not worthy. And you have to ask yourself, why did he do this for me? And once I got over that hurdle, 
It was smooth sailing because he loved me that much. And so I just appreciate it because for me, the hardest step was to know what some of the things I had done and seen, but I couldn't do nothing but sin because I was born in sin without a savior. Not realizing, big as this world is, he was the only somebody born that was the father, I mean the son of the father. And so in the process of that for me, the, the hardest step was knowing I wasn't worried. But when he died on that cross, he made me worthy when I acknowledged him. But even during the acknowledgement, it's still a hurdle because you, I'm not worthy, but he died for you, I'm not worthy. So it's that mentality of the mind to say, you know you're not worthy, yes I do. And to be stuck there, because we can't be stuck there forever because we got work to do. Oh, uh. <laughs> the, the level of compassion when I hear of uh, all this being said that's the kingdom that's the kingdom because within me that's that's what I know as a young person come in you be on fire but when you get all the extra that fire starts going out real quick and you decide you know uh, that's all right I really don't but just to get uh, what minister he sees you, you know, help me to see me the way you see me. Mm -hmm. You know, I see pain, Lord, but you see victory. Mm -hmm. You know, I see where I am, you see where I shall be. Mm -hmm. That right there, and that's that song just keeps saying, help me to see me the way you see me. If, if that's the kingdom message, mm -hmm. because we, it, it, everything else, it, it just, it's so simple, and we make it so complicated, and so life take over. Life just takes over. So when he was saying that, I was like, man, and go with what she said. That's the compassion. When you understand that, that is your compassion to bring that person that is uh, uh, transgender. Or that's your compassion because you realize, I cannot believe you did this for me. So now that person that's down low, Everything in me is just crying out, you can do this, you can yes. do this. And that is why we come to the four walls. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You can do this, get back up, you can do this. Yeah. And pass it on, get back yeah. up. Yeah. Kingdom, yeah. kingdom minded, kingdom pushing, kingdom agenda. Mm -hmm. I, I know sometimes we, we think we don't have to go through something. <clears throat> like trials and tribulations, but we know that we do. We know that with, with knowing the word like we have gotten to know it, that we're going to face some of this. We're, we're going to face it. And that's where our faith in, and um, and belief come, comes in. You know, I, I'm going through some stuff, I mean, and I I didn't know at first. Yeah, it took me. It, it took me somewhere I didn't know it was going to take me because I thought I was ready and I wasn't. So it took me down. It took me down to, to, you know, to the sickness part, to the, you know, things that I never would have thought could have happened to me because I'm strong. I can get through anything, right? And um, he had to show me some stuff. You know, and it was hard. It's hard. It's hard even thinking about it, facing it. I mean, it's hard. But what he's going to do is I know he's got something for me because he loves me oh, yeah. he loves me he loves me enough for me to say I mean, for me to see open my eyes and see some things that i probably would have never saw in case not the way, not the way i was going i can see it and i know i can pay my own bills i don't need you know I, I, I make enough money. I, 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 I don't, you know, God, yeah, I, I, I get up, you know. But it's been times uh, I'm still where I am, and I and I'm still there, and, and I ain't had no job, you know. So who did that? Who did that? You know. And all he did is say, "Just like sister, I need you to rest. I need you to do this. I need you know personal stuff." He told me to do. I I went with that. 
And now I'm, I'm just waiting. I'm ready. I'm, I'm, I'm happy. I'm happy. Whatever, whatever he has for me, he designed it for me. I would have never know. I would have never did any twists and turns like this. I would have did it. I would have did it. I would have did it like going down the highway. Now, he had me going out with my shoes off. Y'all have never seen me move my shoes off. <laughs> I don't want nothing to touch my feet. I don't want my feet dirty. I walk around and have air on the table with my shoes on. I, I need mean, some flip flops or something. I'm not touching my own floor. So he done put me through the, the grass. He done put me through the grass. He done put me through the with snakes and bugs yeah. and bugs and flies. Yeah. Uh, my arm. Look at my arm. Look how my arm is. My arm. I ain't got no carbon, no air. God took me through that. He took me through that to say, hey. You gotta see this. You gotta see this. And I, and I want you to see it. I want you to cut your arm. Look at you. Look at you. You hot. You sweating. You hot. But you come to church. You know, I come to church. I get here. I be hot. Y'all know. Y'all be hot. Okay? And I don't like to be hot. But I come in here. Because I just know God. God is gonna say, I don't. Cast something for you, sister. But you got to believe. You got to trust and believe. Yeah. And you got to keep coming. You can't stay at home. I don't need you to stay there. Yeah. You don't stay at home. Yeah. You did it once. Don't do it no more. Come on, you don't, don't do that no more. And so that's what we have to. Everybody got to go through this. So everybody got to go through something. Nobody's stuff is going to be the same. It ain't going to be the same the results or whatever. But once you know, and I'm, I'm glad that I knew these things were going to come. To, then it, I, I wasn't so thrown off. I didn't like it, right. but I wasn't so thrown off. I kind of just like, t I just throw down and I'm like, okay, get back up. You know, because God wants you to, you know, keep your faith, keep keep doing it, keep going to church, keep, keep calling, keep praying, keep doing all. I need you to keep doing what you're doing because there's some things that's going to happen to you and I need you to be strong. So, you know, that that's what, um, you know, that's what I feel that that um, some things that happened in our life that we're not expecting. But God gives us the strength to get through this if we believe it. We have to believe it. We have to believe that he's going to turn things around for us. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. John, he said, you are already clean. He said, you are already clean. Because of one thing, the word. He said, I have given you. He said, the teaching, which I have discussed with you, the word is what cleans up. And he said, remain with me, and I remain with you. Yes, as no one can be proof of itself without remaining in the body. Right. I really sure in life. What I, you can't do it on your own. Right. You can't do it on your own. Right. God says, I'm going to provide. I'm going to give you the I'm going to give you the power. I'm going to give you the source to do what you need to do. Right. Just remind me. Just rely on me. Just trust in me. Right. And I'm going to do it. <clears throat> and to have that, oh. Yeah. It's out of my hand. Yeah. It's a piece of it's, it's out of my hand. It's in your control. Right. So whatever goes, whatever, whatever food is being back, it's been being, it's because of you. It ain't because of what I'm doing. Right. It's because of what you do. Mm -hmm. <laughs> a child knowing that that's our kids are right, with their parents. And that's why they when they in the house. There's, there's, they, they don't have no, uh, there's no fear there. There's no, because they know mom and dad going to provide. They know food going to be, there's no worry there right. because food going to be put on the table. Mom and dad is going to Right. That's just like whatever. If we get Christ, there should be no worry. Kids, they, when they in the house, they ripping and running through the house. There's no care in the world. Right. They optimize. They, it's right. joy. It's joy there because they ain't worried about nothing. Because everything is being taken care of. They ain't, got, they ain't waking up in the middle of the night uh, talking about what I'm going to eat. Right. Because 
It's only the dead and wounded gonna provide for that. They ain't worried about the cold being thrown in your back. Call mom and daddy gonna do that. Same way with us. Ain't being in the It's a it's a peace there, it's a joy there because you ain't worried about that. Because it's being provided. Because you don't know where it coming from, you know it's being provided. And God is doing the same thing. As long as we remain in him, it's gonna be provided. So it should be a so it should be a peace there, a joy there that God damn it. So I'm, I'm all right. I'm all right. I can go home. But life, life is, is come there to beat that word out of you. And teach you the Christ. So you can't rely on So you won't rely on what, what's been put in you. He ain't coming for you. He's coming for the word. When he take that word from you, he got no peace. He got no joy. Because he got nothing to trust in you. Your hope is gone. Yeah. Wow. I was just thinking, you know, like, you could go on many years because I, I love that scripture, you know, but he you knows the plans that he has for us. You can go here for many a years with the faith and the belief. And sometimes the trials start hitting you so hard that you have to go in there and shower in, in your time. And you have to say, Lord, I know I believe in you and I trust you and I know you love me. And I know I'm going to get through this. But us women, we, we carry a lot of masks. Mask, mask over our face. We have to be this, we have to be that, we have to be this, we have to believe, we have to trust. Not that we don't trust, not that we don't believe. But when them trials get to hit you, or they tan your children, or they tan your home, or whatever, you, you go in that time and be like, Lord, do I believe? Because if I'm not believing in you, help my belief. Yes. If I'm not trusting you, you help my trust. Yeah. If I don't have the faith, please give me yeah. more faith. You know, so, I just, me, I know that, you know, he's an all-loving, wonderful God, and he loves us. He loves us. <laughs> But them trials can hit pretty hard where it will knock you down. And you got to get back up. And it started knocking you down, and it started, like I said, knocking your children down. And this last couple of months that I have been through so much with my son, that even just four days ago, I mean, it was like everybody calling. He's walking around, and somebody said he's going to shoot him. Or he don't have his clothes on and all that and all of this. And I'm like, Lord, now I'm still trusting you, but yeah. come on, God, you know. What's really going on? So now the dad got him, he's in the hospital. And then in all of this, today is my daughter's death, and I didn't even remember my daughter. And she was definitely she be 33 today, my grandkid's mother. And I didn't even remember it. I'm telling you, I didn't remember it until. It hit my phone a while ago, and it's a big old picture, and everybody's like, Rip Antoinette, and all that. And I'm like, Antoinette, my daughter, you know? Mm -hmm. So, yeah, we can put, we put on us women, yeah, we, we trust and we believe in this stuff, but we also got some of these faces that, you know, these masks, these masks, and that it is hard, and only God can take it away. Only God can do what God do. And I've been walking with God a long time, falling down, getting back up and all that. In the last 12 years, I've just really been walking, reading, believing, and trusting and all of that. And I, these are some trials that I ain't never really ever expect to come. But I know God got them. It's not a point, in, it's not a doubt in my mind, but it is I'm believing. And like you said, you get to the point where you be like, God, I'm believing enough. You know, am I believing enough? 
God is a good God. We give God up for nothing. And he laid his life down for us. He laid his life down. We, uh, I don't know if I could lay my life down for anybody. I like to lay it down for my children. You know, but he, he laid his life down. He's a good God. I just wanted to say that because I, I know that you're speaking in about the faith and all that. Sometimes I question my faith and my belief. Man, honest, sometimes I really question and say, God, is in believing and trusting and believing with the faith that, that you got. And if I'm not helping, help me. So Do you see what's going on? Now, do you see this? Yeah. You know, it'll make you ask questions. I know, I know you see because you got. Do you see it? What are you gonna do something about it? You know, and it it, 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 it it gets to that point sometimes. Yeah. To where you have to start asking questions. Look, I know you see me struggling with this thing. Right. Yeah. Well, what you gonna do? When you gonna do it? Cause I'm tired. You know, and it's it's he knows. He knows. And then you know you, you think about you know. From beginning to you know, where we are right now, you know, personally, you know, all that you know, the Lord has done for us, yes. what He's doing for us. It's like right. you know what? You can't help but to say thank, thank you, Lord. thank you, Lord. Yes. And it's like you know, and then sometimes I think that God is like, and just like, can, can I get a thank you? <laughs> you know, even when it's you know, that, yeah. yeah, even when we don't even know we should be saying thank you, right? Yes. Can I get a thank you? Yeah. Can, can I get a thank you? Thank you, Lord. And yeah, Dang. that's we we all go through things, and like you say, you know, wearing you know, walking around wearing masks, yeah. and things like that. You know, you don't want like you say, oh, I don't want that. You got a bad spirit on you. No, it's not. It's life. Yes, it, it's life. Yeah. And because yeah. I'm going through, don't mean I love you any less. That's right. You know, I love you even more, but don't take it personally. <laughs> right. Yeah. You know. But you know, all in all. God has a, 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 a mask. It's like it, like my mom had said, you know, back in those days, the, the husband was always working and the wife had to put on that, you know, that I, I got this, I got the house, I got to do all the clothes, I got to do all the cooking, I got to do all that, and I got the kids, and I got this and that, and it's just so many masks. I got to go get this done, I got to go get this done. And I realized, you know, just gotta sit down and God handle it. That's what I got this. You know, I got this person. Even when you don't think he has you. Yeah. Any other comments? Mm -hmm. Well, I will end right there. A lot more. I will end right there. Yes, sir. Uh, I was sitting here and I've been thinking about growing up in one of the most horrible decades in my life. In the 80s where, where drugs were just coming, well, coming out like uh, crack cocaine and, and all of that was coming out in the 80s. And I remember as a kid going to school and seeing the dare, the dare and what, what uh, Bush's wife, uh, or, yeah, the drug awareness, it was a Reagan, Nancy Reagan, uh, seeing that growing up and going through what I went through. And I like what you said about if Abraham didn't have any faith when God told him to have his son on the altar and that he was going to be uh, sacrificed. And also when he told them about that his wife was going to have a child. And if, if Abraham didn't think that, you know, he didn't have no faith, where would we be? Now, growing up, you know, didn't know anything about love, you know, because how you were growing up. Not because, you know, what I wasn't seeking it. It wasn't showed to me. There you go. So now, now God is showing me the love, the abundant love that wasn't showed to me before. 
Now, he'll show it, he'll show it to you with people that is not you never met before in your life. And he'll show it to you just by the kindness and the compassion what people show to you. Right. So now I'm like, you know, it is it was a dream, what you said about the dreams. I, I told my wife about this dream. And also, uh, Brother Jesse's wife had the dream about the unicorn. That was the last Sunday. Yeah. Sunday. I was in this field, in this field, this beautiful field. And I seen this like it was a white horse. And this horse had a face. But the horse came around and wrapped his head around me like it was hugging me. But with his, with his head. And I was saying... I love you, Hosanna. I love you. And the, and the horse said, with his human face, said, I love you too. Now, is that one thing that we strive is for love? You know, when God, Jesus, was put on the cross, he buried everything. He buried everything. He, he, you know, he could have, you know, he could have had people people followed him. He could have had people rescue him and took take him away where nobody couldn't get to him. But he stood there and buried that the beatings, the name calling. And when he was put on that cross and nailed, I can just I was sitting here and I can just gonna and imagine the pain, the pain that he felt. The, the 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 people like talking to him like all oh, nasty and you know sitting there believe you know hearing that and I'm doing this for you and you sitting there laughing and 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 cursing me you know that's love you know God say God say I love you Jamie mm -hmm. I'm gonna send you people in your life it's gonna be people in your life that gonna love you you know it's gonna be people in your life that's gonna curse you and and tell you things that you're not gonna like. But we're backwards. Yeah. We should be living from victory. Because everything God is going to do, he already did it at the cross. Right. The cross provided full victory for every believer. Wow. From the cradle to the grave. Yeah. So when you think about exchange, the great exchange and all that took place, mm -hmm. God already had all of this in place before we were born. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So when you keep saying, I'm not worthy, well, what, what, when do we get worthy? What makes us worthy? Can't be Jesus. Because if Jesus, his life and death and resurrection is what makes us worthy, he did that before we were born. Well then, me going back and forth over my worthiness is not God. That's deception. That's the devil's word. All of these changes that I keep going back and forth. God, you see what I'm going through. When are you going to do something about it? Well, see, now we're offended when he said, I don't already done something about it. Mm -hmm. yeah. You where you are going through what you're going, not because of me. Right. I'm not the holder. Right. Well, this is kind of going about her son. As if whatever's going on is just now catching God by surprise. Mm -hmm. I knew all of that before her mama's mama mom was going to be born. Right. So, that wasn't addressed at the cross? Yes. Yes. All of that was addressed at the cross. Mm -hmm. Well, then why do we keep going back and forth? Watch this. Now, you read in verse 6, my people are destroyed. Why? Back Back of knowledge. Knowledge. Now, when we started the chapter, look at what it says in verse 1. Hear the word of the Lord. Wait, who is he talking to? Uh, wait, wait. 
The who? To the Israelites. Why are they having to be reminded to hear God's word? He says, God has a controversy, a pleading contention with the inhabitants of the land. All of them. What is the problem, God? There's no faithfulness, wow. pity, and mercy, or knowledge of God from personal experience with him. Right there, the land. How, how is that even possible? How did they get to the land? <laughs> a, a personal God yeah. got him out of Egypt. Yeah. A personal God yeah. kept him in the wilderness. Yeah. A personal God fought all their battles. A personal God is how they got in the land. A personal God is what divided the land. Yeah. How in the world is y'all don't know me from a personal experience? Commercial God. Mm. Look what the land is filled with. There's nothing. But false swearing and breaking faith, mm. killing and stealing, and committing adultery. Oh, wow. They break out into violence. One deed of bloodshed, following close on another. Wait a minute. This is not Israel on Canaan. Oh, y'all missed that. That's Israel on Israel. Mm -hmm. All of this internally, after all that God was trying to do and had given. Man, when you read this, we so far from Mount Sinai. So the law that had been established for them to live by, they should have been living not to it, but from it. They still missed it, like y'all sitting looking at me. <laughs> he said, therefore the land, this, and our land today, shall what? Continually mourn. Why? And all who dwell in it shall languish, together with the wild beasts of oh, the wow. open country, birds of the heavens, yes, the fishes of the sea, also shall perish because of the drought, be collected and taken away. Everybody tore up. <laughs> We marching, we protesting. I just want to see this. We're going to take this home. What you're looking for? Yet, let no man strive, neither let any man reprove another. Do not waste your time in mutual recriminations. We try to correct everybody with each other's foolishness. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I ain't doing as many times as you did. <laughs> you look at this. This is why we. This why we can't. This is why we don't accept the exchange. And she taught the lesson tonight. Watch this. For with you is my contention, O priest. It started with the lid, but when we read it earlier, he said, "I got a problem with all of y'all." <laughs> oh wow! Look at five. You shall stumble in the daytime. And the false prophet also shall stumble with you in the night. How is the false prophet even allowed to be working with the real prophet? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And nobody noticed or said nothing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You got no difference. Ain't no way you can hear a real word from God and then sit comfortably and somebody come with a fake word from God. And you not say nothing? And you let us. You shall stumble. And you're going to continue to stumble in the day and the night. And as a result, you're going to be destroyed. The priestly nation. Why, why, why are we going through these changes, God? My word is knowledge. You know, only don't have enough. Look how you listen to. Because you, the priest of the nation, have this knowledge. But you, you, you're receiving something off You accept the foolishness, but you reject the knowledge of God and expect to prosper in his land. Wow. You don't want my knowledge? Guess what? I will also reject you. That you should be no priest to me. Why? Watch. 
You can't get no help, and when you die, your kids gonna struggle too. Because if you've forgotten me, I already know your kids don't know me. So now the things that we are learning, that's why it's no accident. We think it's strange. It should be strange. And she just mentioned, why was the preacher coming in her office every day? Because he ain't got nothing to offer the people. And I, I promise you, he listened to what she's saying and going back and giving it to his people like, and then they're like, whoo! Oh my God, what about okay. it? It's a homemade study. Don't tell me, I know I can do what's going on. We don't get no fit about that. Because when God gives you a word, He only gave you a word so that you might share that word. We're free to believe whatever we want to believe, but church, we are in a blessed beyond understanding capacity. Jesus says, not only will you do the worship I've done, but greater. We're living the greater and don't even know we're living the greater. <laughs> it is the word. But I've got to make sure I'm not getting a fake word in place of a real word. The reason the people were being destroyed was because it was knowledge that was going forth in the land, but that wasn't God's knowledge. We operate in dangerous circles. You keep listening to people telling you what God is getting ready to do. Or revival is brewing in the land. You know, or a move of God is on the way. We keep listening to people who tell us as if we are... We live in, we live in behind Wait, God. Yeah. Oh God is He get it ready. He get <laughs> And you build your whole life and existence on a fake word because I got news for you. Everything we could hope to have gotten, have, and hope to get is all a result of what Christ did on the cross. Whatever way to get in heaven, it was because of the cross. If you can go from sickness to perfect healing, it's not because of what God is gonna do, it's because of what he already done done. She started in Isaiah 53. We read it, but we weren't paying attention. He went through some things so that we could live a different kind of life. So we're not living to victory, we're living from victory. But until that knowledge sinks in your head, we still chasing. We still chasing. We still chasing. You know, as soon as I get my credit numbers up, you know, I can get a better car. You know, I can get a better house. I can live in a better neighborhood. You know, as soon as my kids get their grades up, you know, they have a better chance for better schooling. So you, you're trying to live to something? We missed the whole point. All that we hope to achieve and accomplish has already been done by the cross. The problem is that's not the knowledge that we're hearing and receiving. Right. Right. Oh, we're making exchanges. But we're exchanging foolishness and hoping for the blessing. And then the church lie to us and tell us the reason you ain't got it is because number one, you ain't given enough and your effort ain't enough. And so we didn't almost went bankrupt Supporting the church is drained, and we ain't got none. Right. And God says, oh, wow. My people are destroyed then, they're destroyed right now today. Because we absolutely won't study none of this for ourselves. We went on somebody else to study it for us. So when someone comes and says, God, he doesn't want to make an exchange. He didn't make an exchange. Will you walk in it? Who don't like nobody in the world to say, God better do something? Okay. If anybody gets saved, 
It's because of what he had already done. Yes. <laughs> when he first showed you covenant in the Old Testament, see, we keep coming, we, we, we got the week to have day for what? Covenant in the Old Testament meant agreement. I told you agreement is only something that is already in place. Just get on this page. Yeah. Said it ain't settling us. And what, what, what faith is in the New Testament is divine. Listen, I'm trying to move you over here, man. I'm trying to move you to understand I done already. That's where Jeremiah come in from. Right. I don't care about your plans. You don't, know, you don't know what's going on. Right. I already got plans for you. And that's why it don't work out because we ain't trying to get with God. I don't want to be married to the one God wants to be married to. I want to find the one I want to take this to God and say, now you bless this. I ain't going to do it. Then we mad at God when he don't cooperate with our, what do you, you ain't got no plans. <laughs> hey, 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 you, you're, you're, you're a child of, of Abraham and you done brought me a, a, a Ishmael descendant. I'm not going to make this work. But I love him, God. I know that's because I ain't in your heart. See, if I was in your heart, ain't no way you could love this. Yeah, I do. Because this ain't nothing, this is totally against me. But the reason you can embrace it is because I ain't in your heart. And we can go on and on and on. And the reality is, he says, my people have accepted such a fake word till when a real one comes, they run that and the one who brought it straight out of town. Y'all, and if our fight don't increase. That's why we will be overtaken with foolishness because it's everywhere. It's everywhere. Foolishness is the norm. Real faith is the unknown. It's not normal, so when we see it, we're so surprised and shocked by it. Those people over the top. Them over the top people. They know what to do. To extreme. Yeah. That's what they call it. We're trying to live two victories. Ain't nothing in front of us. What's in front of us is what God did behind us. So all this we study going on about. Every lie we tell, every cigarette we smoke, every infraction, every sin, every whatever. We're not living to victory, we're living from victory. I, I knew the scope of your life before you was born. I'm the reason you're even in the world. Yeah. You didn't come here on your own. Every last one of us, God brought us here. Yes. I knew what your life was going to be before you got here. That's right. I made provisions not after you got here, before you got here. We say John 3, 16, but it's like, man, when did God love the world? After the world got messed up? If he does it then, he's not a real God. He's a reactive God. <laughs> Jehovah Jireh, God provides, it's from two Latin words. It means pro video, to see before. Because God can see a thing before. He, he never gets caught on guard. So he's not behind the thing now. He's always in front of the thing. He's always in front. So when you wake up and your mama, your dog, and your best friend die, and you're ready to mail it all in because, oh, my whole world is caving in. I don't know how I'm going to make it. God, well, he's been way ahead of all of that. We act like it just caught him by surprise. I know all the folks are going to die the same day. I'm way out ahead of that. My people are destroyed for like, what are, you, what are you saying, God? Mercy is what gets us through every day. He said, my mercies are new in the evening. Every morning. Before you hit the floor and woke up. 
I know exactly what your day entailed. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I made sure you had more than what you needed yeah. to get through your day. Yeah. Sink or swim. Yeah. Hook or crook, live or die. I made sure of that. Y'all, and you got to know that some of that, we don't even use all our mercy. He don't even get the leftover mercy. He said, no matter, in the morning, I got new mercy. Because you're going to have, you have new issues. See? But see, while we're shout, we won't shout while it's going on because that's not what we're hearing. Right. As we read in, in Hebrews, those Abraham had to live to it. Mm -hmm. It didn't happen yet. Right. 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 That's why you can be the father of. Mm -hmm. oh. <laughs> That's what we can study his life today. Right. He had to live to it. Right. But he showed us the errors of what we go through trying to live to a thing. Mm -hmm. And what he showed us is, see, y'all call me humbless. No. Y'all blessed. Because I had to live to the victory. Y'all get to live from the victory. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. And the reality is, and I, and I tell people all the time, you do whatever you want to do. Everybody on TV, everybody on the radio, everybody on the internet has a word. That ain't the issue. It ain't for you. But see, we believe everybody got a word for us. Right. People get offended. People get funny. I tell people all the time, wherever God tells you to serve, he will send people yes, that sir. can hear you. Yes. yes, sir. I don't fight with people. If God didn't send you here, then this is what I know. You can't hear me. And you can't hear him. Because if you could hear him, he would have told you where to go. If you because this is where you want to be, I already know you're not hearing him. And if you can't hear him, you surely won't hear me. Because I'm telling you what he told me to tell you. Which ain't going to make no difference to you. And so all of the time, what's going on? What, what are you hearing? And so much of what we hear makes us believe we got to live to a thing. So we go back and forth. Well, I'm tired of being single. You don't know what tired is. You don't know what being single is. God says, if God's the one who said it ain't good, that ain't nothing he's shown on himself. That means before it even came clear to Adam, God had already worked it out. It ain't dawned on him he was by himself. God saw it, took care of it, before Adam knew what was going on. Because that's how he do. But we think it's our job to assess our own life, our own situation, and figure out what we need, and then go to God like he don't know. Oh, man. <laughs> you see I'm down there tired of being alone. No, what I see is you got room in your life for everybody but me. That's what I really see. Because see, if you make room for me, I'll make room for him. Wow. You ain't saying nothing. And so, yeah, with every other part of this, as, as we move deeper into his covenant, See, that, that, that's the brick wall we keep running into. Is this, am I waiting on him to do something? Or am I ready to come in agreement with what he's already done? What do you think Jesus at the right hand of the Father doing? Now, see, we said it. We said it in the city. That means praying. What, what do you think he's praying for? No, we believe he's praying <laughs> so that we can come into something. Who's who, who, who going to make it happen? What do you think in heaven is greater than what he did on the cross? 
No, no, no. No. What do you think in heaven, event-wise, is greater than the cross? What do you think happened before the cross, or what's going to happen after the cross that's greater than the cross? It's already done. One of the most powerful words in the whole Bible is the word believe, and that's why we struggle with it because we don't. His knowledge. He says, I can do. We keep saying with our mouth what we can't do. Now somebody lied. I ain't talking about folk in the world. Right. You ask him about the church. You say, how you say? Jesus came in my heart. Oh, Jesus in your heart, huh? His word says, I can do all oh, things. But your mouth keeps saying what you can't Somebody lying. God ain't who being destroyed. Now I got to worry about your salvation because Romans 10 says, you confess with your. Wow. Watch this. The, yeah. So as a pause right there. See, we don't know what comes right after that. It says, if you confess with your mouth the Lord. Watch this. Not the Savior. <laughs> We're going to go. Y'all take too long. <laughs> Amplified. It either way, it don't matter. If you acknowledge and confess your list that Jesus is Lord. See, we don't want that part. We just want the Savior part. Right. You don't get the Savior part without the Lord part. Confess in the Greek is homologio. It means to say the same thing God says. If we acknowledge and say with our lips the same thing God says about Jesus, salvation becomes available to the believer. Right. You see that? It's my last part. I'm gone. For with the heart, a person believes and is so justified. So you what that word means. Declare what the word of God, and with the mouth, declares over and speaks out freely his faith and confirms. King James says, "Confession is made of salvation." Mm -hmm. What about no confession? No confession. You know how many people joined church, stood up there, and the priest said, Do you believe Jesus died from the cross? Mm -hmm. Believe he rose from the dead? Do you believe he's come back again? Church ain't saved! And people shouted. What did that person confess? Well, who joined church? A horse? That's where the work continues to be. We don't have the time or the inclination to correct all of the error in the world. Impossible. Don't have time. Nor do the people have the patience. But what God does say is, it is necessary that we make sure that we have his real word. Because all that we live and way more of what we say is what stirs people's life. Good, bad, or indifferent.
Girl, your office. Now, that's the situation. Now, what is the source of your office? Depends on what you tell people. Depends on what you live. As to what people are going to be affected by. Because they want the same thing in their office. Mm -hmm. Now, what do I need to do to get my office to be like her office? Well, now, I'm going to do whatever you say. Now, if I, need, if, 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 if I can get my office to be like your office, why can't I get my life to be like your life? So, everything we teach, everything we say, it is not to victory. It's a, it's, a, it's a challenging adjustment, but it's one all of us make. It ain't the cross and something else. That did it all. Man, when I tell you, that did it all. God figured out a way to address everything wrong with man's past, his present, and his future, and dealt with it all at the cross. Incredible God. Incredible. One act could take care of ready to pray when uh, my first job in Chicago we had to clean the school during the summertime then and so um, I met the custodian oh y'all know that is that's the janitor mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. Dick he had a key ring with about a hundred keys on it and that was in case any teacher lost their individual key. But Jamie, this is what messed me up. He had another key ring that just had one key of master. And there were times when he'd be going through all these keys, keys trying to, and then it did it would dawn on him. Oh shit. He go get this one key ring. And after a while, how's this one key? Opening up all these doors. That's almost like that's illegal. That's, is this a legal key, man? You learn something. We don't think about locks, but there's something in a lock that when you have a master key, it touches something in the lock that other other keys don't have. It's something in every lock, and once this is in this master key and it touches it. It unlocks every lock. So what he told me was, on the first day on the job, he said, man, it's nice to have all these keys, but if you lose all these keys, and you got this one key, you can get in every room in this building. <laughs> Jamie, I learned that's the key I want. Yeah, yeah. Get all these other keys. Yeah. Yeah. That's the key I want. I want the key that unlocks. Y'all, yeah. when Jesus agreed to down the cross, yes. he becomes God's key that unlocked everything yeah. at the cross. Nothing else matters. To not have Jesus is to be in the kingdom or in the earth, jerking on doors, and you mad at God, talking about, he won't open it for me. And God said to him, talking about, show on. I don't know those folk I didn't get a key to. Yeah. First time we lost our house key. Mama and I was sitting there watching TV. See us banging on the door. <laughs> we didn't get up. <coughs> <laughs> so 
Carolina was cold blooded. <laughs> we looked at the one that saw her watching TV. <laughs> 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 we hollered. I know you see we out here. <laughs> Mama ain't never got up. I'm talking a long time later. After we just, you done been crying, tears and dry. You sit on the porch hungry. I mean, a long time later. After a full lesson set in, Mama just unlocked the door. Didn't even open it. Just unlocked it. We heard the window locked. We jumped up and went in the house. Now, I got news for you. When we got the next key, yeah. I mean this. We've been proud of this. When, we, when I got the next key, I might have lost my scar. I might have lost a glove or two. I might have lost my hat. I got news for you. I came up with that key though. Cause see, one thing about it. Hey, I, I sat up there a long time and had a thought about that. Yeah, I don't know, I don't know how I lost the first key. And I got a newspaper. That was many years ago. And right now today, y'all back to the joke. We go in the house. All while my kids look, they play with my wife's kids. She got to go on a safari hunt. I swear for God, if you move my keys. Right now. <laughs> yes, Lord. Yeah. Age, I got time for the truck. Hey, when I come to the house, I put my keys in the same spot all the time. You can ask them right now, they grown. Hey, yeah, where my keys at? Mom, where my keys at? They already know. <laughs> if they don't put my keys back where I have them, it's going to be some furniture moving. <laughs> Not going to be redecorated. You don't got time for that. Y'all. I'm trying to tell you, you think it's about these keys, I'm trying to tell you, quit letting the devil give you a whole key ring for the keys that don't like nothing. Jesus is the only key we need, but you better make sure that's the one you got. He unlocks everything, and he unlocked it at the cross. Ooh, well, I was going over a whole lot of time tonight. <laughs> <laughs> well, let's pray then since she didn't went over. <laughs> Father, we thank you and we praise you. For your word tonight. Yes, God. All of the different ones who continue to labor in your word. I thank you we're moving. We're digging deeper into it. A subject we've never studied before. But this isn't about information. It's about our life and our destiny. And not just ours. We're not just living for us. We're living for the kingdom. And what we learn every day, God, is that we're not important in the kingdom. We are important in the kingdom because you are important in the kingdom. Thank you so much for your real word. People all over the world arbitrarily thank you for a word. And a word is not what people need. We need the word. Jesus didn't say he was a way, a truth, and a life. No, no, no. He was specific. He said he was the way, the truth, and the life. Because we don't need a way. We need the way. We don't need a life. We need the life. We don't need a life. We need the life. That only he provided on the cross. We honor you and we praise you for the opportunity to study your word, to stand in the presence of you and your people and declare a living word to a dying world for your glory, your honor, your praise. Thank you for safe travel home. Thank you for an awesome night of rest and sleep. 
we look forward to meeting you in this place in the morning prepared to give you all the glory, all the honor, and all the praise. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Thank you for that word.